This is a low light scene in my garage shot on this action camera and so is this. It's the exact same camera used for both and the external lighting has not been changed. Yeah, this option is legitimately impressive. So if I'm honest with you, I think cycling around at night is actually one of my favorite times to get a ride in. It's usually the only time during the week I can actually get a bit of time for myself. Rush hour's over so there's less traffic, fewer pedestrians, and yeah, I just really like it. The thing is, capturing footage of rides like this has always been tricky, right? Most cameras really struggle in low light situations and try to compensate by dropping the frame rate, upping the exposure, and just cranking up that ISO number. Unfortunately, it often turns out like this, quite dark, grainy, choppy footage that lacks quite a lot of detail. It's one of the reasons why you won't have seen me use much footage from this time of day in any of my videos. It often looks pretty awful and it's just not good enough. Now, one solution is a bigger camera with a much larger image sensor like a DSLR, but that's not really that practical. For riding footage, we're almost always talking about action cameras and this is where decent AI image processing can come in to measurably improve the output. It can take an image or in this case a video and artificially improve it. AI at its core is just a bunch of complex math, right? It uses various mathematical models to process pixel values, determine patterns and basically enhance an image. Most cameras can't do this because they don't have the horsepower. That's where this new Ace Pro 2 comes in. It has two processing chips on board, one for general image wrangling, like any other camera, but it also has a dedicated AI processing chip. What that means in reality is that this camera assesses each frame in real time and selectively makes adjustments in low light. It's an absolute game changer. This is the same section of road, uh, I wrote it twice. One filmed with the regular video mode and one with the pure view mode switched on. It, it's legitimately impressive what this AI mode can pull off. You can pick out detail that's just much less defined in the other footage. Most cameras like GoPros will make low light adjustments affecting the whole image. So uh, like I mentioned before, changing the ISO or, or frame rate, but it can only do so much, right? The AI, on the other hand, can selectively adjust parts of each frame in real time. So if part of the footage is darker, the AI will selectively boost brightness in that area without overexposing everything else. The final result is bonkers. In low light environments, this pure view option can even restore the color of, of footage as well. I mean, even though the lighting here is very warm and yellow, the tones on my face are actually, yeah, they're, they're quite natural. So look, back when I was commuting to work on my bike, like many of you, I assume, I always ran a GoPro underneath my handlebars and I've had a couple of generations of them just in case something was to happen, you know. The, the thing is, after dark, the footage is so crummy. I mean, this is a GoPro Hero 10, so couple of years old, but you get the idea. Compare that to this. I mean, it's, it's not a stretch to say that picking out a number plate or potentially what someone looked like in the case of a problem would be so much easier with this thing. I mean, this footage, I'm riding around Oxford. It's about 8 p.m. Sunset was nearly four hours ago. Often when AI is bundled in with something, it can be a bit of a, a, bit of a gimmick, right? This fridge has AI built in to, to help you out somehow, but in this case, the AI genuinely improves on the base product. Although maybe I've just ruined any potential fridge-based sponsorship for the, for the future. So like I showed you at the beginning, this is the regular footage from the Ace Pro 2. And uh, you know what, considering the lighting or complete lack thereof, it's honestly still pretty good because it actually packs one of the largest image sensors for an action camera like this, bigger than the latest GoPro Hero 13, for example. But it, it's still quite dark and the visible grain does muddy the image. Using that AI powered pure video mode, the image is brighter, crisper, less noise. Yeah, so much more usable. So this pure video AI is not a gimmick. Now you might be able to get similar results using services like Topaz Video AI, but you know, that, that's, that's expensive. You gotta pay to get access. This is free. It's baked into the camera. And this thing isn't crazy expensive either. In fact, it's a little bit cheaper than the current top of the line GoPro Hero 13. And it's got a bigger image sensor and it's got this flip up screen, which is incredibly useful. And look, obviously recording footage during daylight hours, everything look, looks phenomenal. I mean, I used this very camera on a recent gravel biking trip. I, I took to Madrid. It was my last video actually. And yeah, the quality of the footage is top tier. Now, I only shoot in 2.7K actually because the file sizes are, are a little bit smaller, but you can shoot up to 8K resolution on this thing, which is, yeah, absolutely bonkers really. And I really love the kind of fringing, the motion blur 
you can get on the edges of the frame as well. You can do this in post on the Insta360 app using this ND filter option. But yeah, it just looks really good, nice and vibrant. Yeah, I, I'm very happy with it. And the stabilization is great. It's got a best in class, 157 degree wide angle removable lens caps in case you kind of scrape it up. Plus a really well-designed magnetic mounting system. Yeah, this is incredibly useful. So quick and easy to swap mounting positions and it's super robust and secure as well. And the wind noise, right? So for most of my action cameras and GoPros I've had in the past, I've actually had to stick dead cats onto the mic ports just to be able to get usable audio outside. But on this thing, a wind guard is already included and you can kind of take it on and off as needed. It serves exactly the same purpose. Yeah, amazing. Plus, it also uses that AI chip to process audio so it can remove any background noise and really focus on your voice as well. You can make that out in this in this clip, actually. I mean, I'm in Spain on a gravel bike talking about something completely unrelated, but it was incredibly windy and the audio is still nice and crisp. Realize here is that mountain bike gear needs to be robust, right? Lastly, the companion app it is really good. I never got on with the, with the GoPro one. It changed loads over the years and was always really slow when you're kind of reviewing footage. Not the case here. The camera actually creates its own Wi-Fi network so it can stream things really fast. It means you can review and edit footage on your phone without having to download anything locally first. So that saves loads of time. Yeah, really useful. So I'm sure it's obvious, but Insta360 have sponsored this episode. But, but yeah, this Ace Pro 2, it is legitimately really cool. Often when a new action camera comes out, it feels like an incremental upgrade. But this one, to me at least, feels like a generational leap. But let's say you own a decent GoPro or even the previous generation Ace Pro. Is it worth the upgrade? Well, if you film in predominantly bright sunny conditions, there are advantages like that wind guard and the ridiculous 8K recording. But the killer feature here is that low light performance. If you film anything after sunset with the pure video AI function and the largest image sensor in its class, I mean, it's the best thing out there. So yeah, really impressed with this thing. I'll put the details in the description for those that are interested. And thanks to Insta360 for kind of propping up what, what I what I do around here. Anyway, um, subscribe if you like this kind of thing, hit the like button and leave me some baguette emojis in the comments. And that's it. See you next time. Oh, ciao.